We are in Bagnères de Luchon, which was the start of stage 17 of this year's Tour de France, which was the special stage. It was only 65 kilometers long, yet still had 3,200 meters of climbing. So I'm joined by author and cycling journalist Pete Cossins because we're going to ride the stage because we want to see how we compare to the pros when they rode it and how good those guys actually are. I feel, uh, I feel quite excited by this, all I have to say. Yeah. I'm, I'm extremely nervous as well because I know what lies ahead. We've got 65 kilometers heading off up the Perisord this way, first of all. It's only 65K, how hard can it be? I, th I think there's 38 kilometers of climbing <laughs> and three, nearly three and a half thousand vertical meters of, of gain. They've crammed it in, they've uh, crammed it in. And the climb at the finish, I've heard, has been rated the hardest climb in France after Mont Ventoux. So uh, it's going to be quite a stage. Yeah, and we're going to be riding it full gas today because we want to find out what we can do compared to the pros. So the idea is that we can give you something as amateurs to relate to because me and Pete are both amateurs. Pete, you're a bit older than I am. You perhaps don't ride as much as me. And, you know, I'm a bit of a, a bit of a kino. Uh, <laughs> do, do quite like to race a bit, although I think what I lack in talent, I try to make up for in enthusiasm. We're going to set off on the stage now. Pete's going to go before me. I think we'll give, what do you want, 10, 15 minutes? See if At I can... least, yeah. Stay here as long as you can, please. And I'll see if I can catch you. I'll get a carrot to chase. It's pretty cool. <laughs> right. I think less talking and more doing. I'm going to go. Right. See, see you in a bit. Later. Bye. Just putting a bit of lube on my chain. It's a bit dry. Need need all the help I can get on a day like today. Today is going to be tough. I'm trying to sort of break it down in my head, as I'm sure a lot of the riders will. Um, and in my head, it's three time trials. You've got the Perisor to go up there. It's like a fairly long climb, took 12 kilometers, 13 kilometers, and then 10 kilometer climb up the Azet, and then finally a 15 kilometer climb to finish. So in my head, each one of those is a sort of time trial with a sort of chance to recover on the descents, hopefully. My threshold power at the moment is around 300 watts. So maybe I'll try and sort of do 290 on the first climb and see how I go for the others and then empty the tank on the final climb. That's probably a sensible way to go about it. But I'm gonna take this microphone off because it's extra weight, isn't it? I need to, I need to lose all that, all that extra weight. Gains, mate, gains. Right, I'm gonna set off now. I'm gonna do it. Wish me luck. <laughs> it's gonna be hard. <laughs> About 20 minutes in at the Perisord. Whose idea was this? <laughs> oh God, knackered already. Sun cream's already down into my eyes. <laughs> What's happened, Pete? The uh, electronic gearing is packed up, the rear derailleur is packed up, so I was trying to ride up uh, to uh, the Col d'Azé here in the 11 sprocket, which was never going to work very well. So, uh, just going to abandon, and maybe if the bike dries out a bit, we can give it another go in a minute because the rain was torrential up over the Perisord where we've just come down up there. It's still almost snowing at the top, but it's, it's sunny just up over it in the other valley in the next one so guess we'll go catch Ollie then yeah let's go and see what he's up to On the 
final climb now and the other two efforts are really taking their toll. I feel like I'm swinging. I survival mode, just trying to get up now. This climb is hard. It keeps having ramps of like 10% and they're killing me. <laughs> That was seriously hard, and like, I don't know, I, I assume they're going to resurface that for the tour, but at the moment with it being gravel, that last bit as well was really steep. I, I, also, I just found like, on the first two climbs my power was good, I was like riding that threshold on the first two, so sort of for me that's about 300 watts, and I was over 300 watts on the first two climbs, but then on this one, um, the fatigue just set in. I ate plenty. Um, I ate as you know as much sugar as I could get in, but I wasn't under fueled. I was just fatigued. You know, doing three time trials back to back in quick succession like that is really hard. And I was just struggling to get my heart rate up really high on this climb as well. And it just goes on forever. It's so long. And the other thing is, you know, now we're at altitude as well, so that makes it hard. And that I've started to feel that. That started to kick in. There you go. Ugh. That was slow. <laughs> I think the pros will do that in two and a half hours. So I'm about an hour down. Don't think I've made the time cut today. <laughs> I think I'm leaving the Tour de France today. <laughs> I'm gonna join Pete in the van now. Fortunately, I had a mechanical on the Azette. I'm gonna get some food. I want some food, I'm starving. Oh. So here we are, back at Cycling Weekly HQ. And as you can see, I'm not Oliver Bridgewood or Pete Cousins, but I do have their results here. So we're gonna have a quick look and see how they match up against the pros. Unfortunately, as you saw in the video, I don't have Pete's results as it's DI2 flooded at the bottom of the cold as a. However, I do have Ollie's, so we'll see how Heat matches up against the pros and see if he can beat the time cut. So I've broken the stage up into five sections. We've got the ascent up the Parasword, the descent, the climb up the cold as a, and the descent, and the final climb up to the Col de Porte. So the quickest rider up the Col de Perisord, according to Strava, obviously other riders may not have uploaded their, their results, was Marcus Burkhardt, who um, did it in 42 minutes 50. And in comparison, the peloton went up in 45.52, and that was Steven Kreuzweig's time. And we'll be using him as a comparison as he finished sixth on the stage, and he was pretty much consistent with the lead group throughout the entirety of the stage. If we look at one of the slowest riders of the day on Strava, it was Lauren Pichon who ascended the Parasol the slowest in 50 minutes, 29 seconds. And if we compare that to Oli, he's actually holding his own here. He's, he crested the Parasol in 51 minutes, 13 seconds. So he's only about 45 seconds behind and still theoretically within the time cut. So on that climb, Oli managed to maintain his aim of 300 watts for the entirety of the climb, an average heart rate of 162 beats per minute and with an average speed just under 16 kilometers an hour. However, as the stage went downhill for the first time, Ollie's attempt to beat the virtual time cut also went downhill too. So the first rider on Strava was Roman Hardy, who averaged the descent, the, well, the second half of the descent of the Parasword in 67.9 kilometers an hour, just over five minutes at five minutes 26. And the main peloton weren't too far behind, to be honest, either. They, Stephen Kreuzweig, did it in 5.38, so there was only a 12 second difference. However, as we saw in that footage, the weather wasn't exactly favorable to Ollie as the clouds came in, the rain started to pour down, and his time showed with Ollie completing the final 6K of the descent in nine minutes, 14 seconds, which is an average speed of just under 40K an hour. So as the peloton headed up the second climb of the day, the Col d'Azé, we saw Roman Bardet and his teammate Pierre Latour trying to stretch the race a bit. And it showed because Roman Bardet was the fastest pro up the second climb of the day in just under 21 minutes at 20.57. 
and Steven Kreuzweig wasn't too far behind to be honest at 2059. However, when we look at Ollie's time, this shows the differences starting to open up between the pro rider and an amateur. As it took Ollie 30 minutes, 25 seconds, with an average speed of 14 kilometers an hour. So as Ollie and the pros headed downhill for the second time and the last time of the stage 17, Ollie gained a bit more respect as the conditions were a bit more favorable and the road had dried out. He completed the descent in 14 minutes 36, just over the 10 and a half K. However, in comparison to the pros, he is still losing out on time with Roman Hardy, the fastest rider on Strava from yesterday's stage at 10.45, with Steven Kreuzweig coming in a bang on 11 minutes. So Ollie's time up the Col de Porte was one hour, 22 minutes, 57 seconds. And you can see now this is where Ollie started to flag as well with his watts dropping for the first time below his 300 watts aim to 255 watts for the climb. Still quite impressive, if you're asking me, but what's even more impressive is the pros times themselves. So Steven Kreuzweig, who finished sixth on the stage, one minute, five seconds behind Nairo Quintana, ascended the same distance in 50 minutes, 26 seconds, almost, well, more than half hour faster than Ollie at 19.3 kilometers an hour. So the slowest rider who updated their ride to Strava was Timothy Dupont, who rode the Porte in one hour, seven minutes, 36 seconds, which averaged 298 watts, which was similar to what Ollie was averaging over the first two climbs. So the final results, as we all know, Nairi Quintana won the stage in two hours, 21 minutes and 27 seconds, an average speed of just over 27 and a half kilometers an hour. The final rider to roll in was Michael Hepburn at two hours, 52 minutes and 57 seconds at 31 minutes, 30 minutes down on Quintana. So how does that compare to our cycling weekly riders? As we know, unfortunately, Pete is a DNF after his mechanical issue on the second climb of the day. And Ollie, unfortunately, won't be lining up on the following day stage either after rolling in at three hours, 28 minutes and three seconds down. Still a respectable 18.2 kilometers an hour, but unfortunately he won't be making it to Paris. Thank you for watching our stage 17 analysis video and leave a comment below on what you thought of the stage 17 itself and whether you'd like to see any more stages like this in Grand Tours in the future. Don't forget to subscribe to Cycling Weekly and we'll see you next time. Wait, I didn't say we could tow you. Sticky bottle, pros get sticky bottles. <laughs> get off the car. Definitely omit this bit from the uh, footage, Andrew. <laughs> Otherwise, my ride will get flagged on Strava. <laughs>